Dylan can email us all the pictures he wants. It's not gonna change my mind on Chase Daniels. What's up, YouTube? It's the Super Bowl 54 betting preview for the 2019-2020 NFL season. Fat guy, let's take a look at the NFL playoffs against the spread leaderboard where Laser Jets in 10 games has gone seven, two, and one. Knickerbockers, Ashley Schaefer's BMW, Triple Eight, and Sir Mixalot all with six wins. Unfortunately for Triple A, didn't get his picks in quite early enough on Saturday, but he's a 6 1 and 1, good for 85.7%. You think all these people are live? That was a stupid thing to say. Well, you, you can catch them. There are tiebreakers, so you six win players. All you do is pick the winner and the corresponding tie breaks, and you might just do it. Assuming Laser Jack Jets picks wrongs. Assuming Laser Jets picks wrong. That was kind of hard to say. I don't know why. I mean, he has the, the power. His destiny is in his hands. Laser Jets, just pick the winner, and you win the contest, and I'll, we'll be sending you a T-shirt. Following down the line, Tony2930, Johnny's playoffs. Don't talk to me about playoffs. LGPC 2019. Hob, hobbled Goblin versus Fat Guy Slim, a battle for the ages. A uh, foreshadowing of our weight bet between myself and Sam. And overall, picks against the spread for the season. Jake Jacobs, pick last, is going to finish first no matter what. East Steelers, Richard, not too far behind, two wins behind. Detroit one time has caught up to us. We're now tied for third place with him mickey hill and dylan are still tied there's going to be a huge tiebreaker there we're going to have to wait and hear who each side is is on as well as captain save a hope satuple t-shirt time with the impressive 57 and a half percent 131 wins in 231 attempts as well as fellow youtuber half moon's picks good for 50.6 percent on the season still on the bright side of 50. now we're tied for third all right detroit time we're tied we shall see in the Super Bowl, who comes out victorious? All right, fat guy for the for the season 139, 123, and four. As people saw in the last slide, for our careers, our YouTube careers 336, 299, and 19. Good for 53 and a half percent. We'll move on to the JS 715 name of the week. Honorable mentions: We have Baker Mayfield, Bakes Brownies, Wild Baked. I pick winners one. I pick winners when I'm drunk, fat guy. Beast Mode stole my Skittles. F Bob Duarte. Pubes are in season. Like that one. And Teddy KGB. Little rounders uh, callback there. And the Baker Mayfield bakes brownies while baked. Who doesn't like alliteration? No kidding. I, I like the person who picks winners when he's drunk. And on to the JS715 name of the week. Hi, King Todd Field. Bow to me, bitches. I mean, you know, if, if you're going to... To summon a deity, who better than <laughs> High King, the hairless Todd Field? That's true. Who doesn't want the hairless High King? Even Dylan put up a, a little bit of a wager that he's going to be first place next year on the leaderboard. We're still pending on how much it's going to be. He did give a monetary figure that I will not produce. It was in the four-digit realm, though, of USD. Uh, he's kind of backtracked a little bit once i accepted but we shall see he's going to confirm it he said by april assuming he gets that job at planet fitness <laughs> you even gave him plus 120. i did give him plus 120 of the kindness of my faint heart so remember to compete this year compete next year we don't want dylan winning he could be uh it could be very very lucrative for him or the fat guy yeah i don't want to put up that much usd it's a hefty fine that is a hefty fine Remember to make your pick for the Super Bowl at BigRyeAndTheFatGuy.com. There'll also be a link in the description, and hopefully this week it actually works. All right, YouTube, on to the Super Bowl, which is going to be two weeks from today. We're recording this on Monday, January 20th. The game will be 6.30 p.m. Eastern time between San Fran and Kansas City. They're playing on a neutral field in Miami. The Chiefs, as of now, are one and a half point favorites. Fifty-seven percent of early betters are on the Chiefs. Fat guy, who you got? Oh, gee, this is this is honestly the toughest pick of the year. I, I really don't love it. In fact, Big Rye had to talk me into this one. He really did at the start. He fat guy wanted to toss a coin. On I wanted to pick. flip a coin, everyone, and he he kind of he didn't put his foot down, but he he nudged me in the direction of the San Francisco. My 49ers. petite feet was was 
firmly on the floor for this one. Well, hopefully my nuts weren't underneath it. That cost me more, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah, that sure would, especially if I got heels on. Yeah, well, who wouldn't who wouldn't want that? Uh, we're going with the 49ers here. This is the slimmest of margins. I'm not betting this personally. And in the contest, we're just doing it as a pick em. We We really are. So just pick one side. Make it as easy as humanly possible. Yeah, and uh, if you're betting this game, bet the money line. For, yeah. If you're going to be taking San Fran, anywhere up to two and a half, take uh, Kansas City spread. Yeah, that makes sense. I don't think this is going to be a 50-50 split game. It really is for money and public percentage, I would imagine. Uh, Vegas is pretty good at this thing, and this is a line that you can't screw up. <laughs> you, you can't be messing around here. This is the big one. They need to take their guaranteed commission. You know, you get $11 million on each side. You're pocketing a million bucks. Not bad. It's pretty Not good. Not bad. And who knows Who knows how much this, how high this could go. 100,000 bets on the uh, college national championships. So uh, could it exceed that? I, I would imagine so. And don't forget, too, the, the black market on this game is just going to be just going to be enormous across the uh, across the United States and I guess the world in, in general. I always find it interesting though that uh, governments aren't interested in at least pocketing a few shekels. I mean they're coming it, around on it but it's definitely taking time. Yeah but like how many billions are going to be bet on this game outside of outside of the sports book? That's Manny. part of why it's a shady trench coat business, as I like to say. It certainly is. I'll be the guy with the uh, plastic glasses with the nose attached. Anyways, uh, we're going to be taking the San Francisco 49ers. Uh, I'm going to do a small handicapping thing. I don't really do it, but uh, I think we did it, I guess, last year. Uh, we're going to do it without the graphics here. I'm just going to kind of run them down because it's not it's not really what I'm into, but uh, uh, it is something worth noting. At least at least it's a, it's, it's a point of interest in the game, let's call it. So positionally, let's talk advantages. So uh, on the, at the wide receiver position, I'm going to have to side with the Kansas City Chiefs. If you've got a foursome of uh, Tyreek Hill, Sammy Watkins, uh, McCole Hardman, the rookie, second round, uh, I guess we'll call him a flashy rookie. He's at flashes of brilliance, quite the speedster, and Demarcus Robinson. I'll take them over uh, Debo Samuel, Manny Sanders, uh, Kendrick Bourne, and I guess Richie James, who really only seems to be a... Uh, returning kicks and but he did a good job he did a good job in the conference championships uh championship singular rather against the green bay packers so i'm gonna side with the advantage for the chiefs now the next one we got up is offensive line i think it's a just just by the success of their run game regardless of who that running back i think it's a clear 49ers pick here uh, especially they've got former first round pick in uh mike mcglitchie as well as joe staley maybe the two most stable bookends in all the National Football League, maybe only rivaled by uh, perhaps the Tennessee Titans, Taylor Lewin, and Jack Conklin. Jack Conklin having a bit of a rough game, I would say, penalty-wise, against the Kansas City Chiefs. Interior, Lakin Thomas and Ben Garland. Mike Person, who was a journeyman, kind of having a, a bit of a resurgence, let's say. That's uh, I think that's a little bit better than uh, Eric Fisher, a former first overall pick, surprising one, who has come around uh, quite a bit since that selection. And one of our favorites, Mitchell Schwartz, on the other side at right tackle with uh, with the Kansas City Chiefs, formerly of the Cleveland Browns. Quite a player in him. And then uh, following the interior, Andrew Wiley, Austin Ryder, Ron Duvernay, Tardif. So, I mean, I, I still think the advantage is going to head in the direction of the San Francisco 49ers. Now we got on to tight end. Uh, I'm going to I'm gonna call it a tie between Kittle and Kelce. I, I actually, you know what? I, I prefer George Kittle uh, just because of the blocking aspect. He, he's an every-down player. What do you think, Big Rye, on that one? Kittle's been dominating defensive ends, like star defensive ends yes. blocking-wise. It's unbelievable. It's a huge advantage to it have really Kittle. Is. It's uh, the same thing with both fullbacks on both sides, Kyle Juszczyk, as well as Anthony Sherman. But Kittle gives you just a little bit more blocking than Kelce does. Kelce probably gives you a little bit more receiving. receiving but, but Kittle, there's not much drop-off, whereas Kelce, there is a lot of drop off with his blocking. Yes, absolutely. I had in my notes that I, I like preferred Kittle, but it's hard. It's hard to say when you see uh, Travis Kelce on the other side. It's hard to sign up to pick somebody else. It really does. And then uh, following in fullback, I'm going to take Kyle Uzcheck over Anthony Sherman. I think that's pretty pretty safe. I think so. Too. Not that Anthony Sherman's a bad player. Let's be realistic here. Uh, at running back, I'm going to call it a tie. I'm, I'm kind of leaning towards. Uh, 
Uh, I'm, t- I'm leaning towards the Chiefs. I don't. I I find Damian Williams to be quite the uh, dynamic player the last two years. Although Raheem Mostert, I mean, you ha- you see that performance he had, but those holes were huge. I feel like that could have been accomplished with Matt Breda or Jeff Wilson if need be. Tevin Coleman, interesting to see if he comes back from injury. I don't think Tevin Coleman's coming back. I think they're going to kind of tease it all week. Uh, yeah. I, I think this is clearly San Fran has the edge at running back, but that's only because of the depth they have. After, outside of Damian Williams, there's LaShawn McCoy and Darwin Thompson. Uh, not a huge fan of either of those guys. Uh, on the San Fran side, though, you've got Raheem Mostert, who just played unreal. Uh, Matt Breda, as well as Jeffrey Wilson that can come in and fill in for Tevin Coleman, at least on short yardage plays where he's uh, one of the bigger backs in the league and can get it done, especially compared to Mostert and Breda. I just prefer Damian Williams over any of the other players, to be honest. And uh, yeah, I, I'm still, it's still a tie in my brain, but uh, clear for the big rye. And then we're going to, we're going to flip on side of the defense. So defensive end, uh, come on, pretty clear here. <laughs> We're going San Francisco 49ers. Bosa, Armstead, D. Ford. Uh, tough to beat. One of the better ones in the league. It's impressive that they're all playing at such a high level at the same time. Because yes. you get you get good players, you get good defensive lines. But coaching-wise, they have every single one of these guys playing at, at the top of their abilities in their careers at this moment. I think that's fair to say, fat guy. Yeah, I totally think so, too. But I, I still don't think the Chiefs are weak in this position between Frank Clark and... Uh, Tano Salpion, I can never say his name. I've heard it a million times on broadcast. Just can't say it, though. And they added Terrell Suggs. He had a pass batted down, though, in that uh, in that game against Tennessee uh, just yesterday. Just it's, oh, it's I don't know. It's kind of interesting. Like, you always wonder, can Suggs just ramp it up and be old Suggs for one afternoon? I don't know. It's pretty interesting to me. Well, I wonder what his MVP odds would be, Suggs. If I can get 200 to 1, I might be footing 10 bucks on that one. Also interesting is D4 going against his old team. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And the only way that this could happen is the Super Bowl. On the interior, I'm also going to side with the San Francisco 49ers. DeForest Buckner. I mean, they do have Chris Jones and uh, Derek Nadi. And Mike Mike Pennell had a pretty impactful. He's played very well. He's had some very important run stops in the playoffs. Yes, very important. And then uh, a guy I liked in the draft who hasn't really played up to his potential, Solomon Thomas on the Niners, as well as Earl Mitchell. I, I'm still going to prefer the uh, cohesion of the entire defensive line uh, as uh, for the San Francisco 49ers, but I think it's uh, it's difficult. It's very difficult to uh, to discount the, the Chiefs and how good they are. I, I There's... Mean, these defensive lines are so exciting, both sides. There's there's five game records, I'm going to say, between yeah. Chris Jones, Frank Clark, D. Ford, DeForest Buckner, and Nick Bosa. There's five very special players there. I would even put Eric Armstead ahead of D. Ford. It's just pretty impressive. I'm going to add all... Nah, Eric Armstead's on the fringe of that. Uh, I think a linebacker has got to be the weakest point for both teams, realistically. I mean, Quan Alexander... Even with the hot boys? Injured. Oh, God. Uh, I will say this, though. Fifth-round rookie for the San Francisco 49ers, Trey Greenlaw, pretty good. He's popping off film, let's put it that way. He's noticeable during the broadcast. Uh, Fred Warner is the other starter in the in the middle, and then uh, Aziz as well. And then uh, Mark and Zocha, he plays mostly special teams. This is a weak point, I would say. Um, really, really tough to... I'm going to call it a tie here, tie of weakness. On the side of the uh, Kansas City Chiefs, uh, Anthony Hitchens... Damian Wilson. I mean, Darren Lee was a healthy scratch. Former first-round pick. More of a coverage linebacker in theory, but seems to be unable to do anything. More of a tweener, uh, formerly of the New York Jets. Curious if he gets uh, gets the nod by the uh, uh, by the Kansas City Chiefs. Reggie Ragland does play snaps here and there. Did see him on the field, but uh, he, I don't know. Not, not exactly my favorite linebacker either. I'm going to call it a tie of weakness between the two. At cornerback... At cornerback, uh, I don't really love the, either of these corner groupings. I mean, you do have uh, Richard Sherman, Akilah Witherspoon, who was, uh, he was replaced. Essentially been benched for it, Emmanuel Mosley, and yes. Mosley has played terrific in the playoffs. Absolutely. And Kwan Williams has also also done terrific yes, in the spot. Yes, I, I would agree. And then uh, Richard Sherman getting in a little bit of heat with uh, Darrell Revis about his uh, man-to-man skills, about how he's only a uh, zone corner, which... I don't think is wrong, uh, but you know what I mean? He, he's in the Super Bowl. I don't know why I would be, you know, chastising him from my couch. 
And I like the picture he took. He had a small TV on a giant wall. That's always a good look, Darrell Revis. I mean, did not pay you enough money in Tampa Bay? One of the most ridiculous contracts. Anyways, uh, at cornerback, I am going to side with the 49ers, but it's the slimmest of margins, I would say, as well. Uh, you've got Ward, uh, Bashod Breland, who almost had, I don't know, pick of the playoffs. It was, it was overturned, but it was very fantastic. Kendall Fuller, who was thought to be the, the best nickel corner in the game, but that has not come to fruition. Also, they've got another uh, uh, former retread. I think he was a seventh overall pick by the Dallas Cowboys. Also had stops in the Jets, Morris Claiborne, who was also a healthy scratch. Curious to see if he gets uh, called up. But I, right now ahead on the depth chart is uh, Rashad Fenton, a, f- a newly acquired six-round pick rookie for the Kansas City Chiefs. I am going to side with the Niners um, as well in this position. And then on to safety. Uh, this is going to be an advantage for me for the Kansas City Chiefs between Daniel Sorensen, who has played the game of his life. <laughs> he played a good game, and it, don't forget no, he that was the, the game uh, of his life. Okay, that conference game of championship. His life. It was pretty. It was pretty good. Can you remember a better Daniel Sorensen performance? I can remember a better tackle uh, to close out the game against. Uh, I can't recall. It was a tackle. Oh no! It was on the fake punt. He had the tackle against Houston. I will Not say bad. one thing: he did fall down on the touchdown catch. Uh, I can't remember which guy it was, but he did fall down on that play, unfortunately. Otherwise, might have been Will the, Fuller in the Houston game. Or are you talking no, about no, it? last game. Oh, in the Titans game. Uh, first Kerr. Uh, Anthony Ferkser. Oh, okay, okay. There's just so many mistakes. I guess we're, we're losing track here. And Teran Matthew, <laughs> who's uh, he's a gamer. He's a pretty good player. Like hard, hard, hard to argue against the Honey Badger. On the other side, you got Ward and uh, Jaquiski Tart. I, I I don't know if that's the right name, but I don't think there's a there's a there's a uh, book. On how to pronounce Jaquiski. So <laughs> <laughs> you can't blame me if I get that one wrong, despite hearing his name hundreds of times. Now we've glossed over the most key position, but that wasn't bu- oh, that was on purpose. If anything, is the quarterback, and this is very clear in the favor of uh, the Kansas City Chiefs. It's you'd be hard pressed to find a San Francisco 49er hopeful that would argue that Jimmy Garoppolo is a better quarterback than Patrick Mahomes. Not that Jimmy Garoppolo isn't a fantastic quarterback in my estimation, but... I'll throw this caveat in there. Okay. Jimmy Garoppolo has won more games and has a better winning percentage than Patrick Mahomes. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. But there are uh, 53 players on a roster and 45 starters, and not all of that, not all of that falls on one man. But I think the Chiefs are really going to need the performance of a lifetime. We're going to need a Daniel Sorensen from Patrick Mahomes <laughs> in order to get the type of victory that they need, or the type of performance they need to uh, to win the big one. So I, I I think Mahomes is probably the second best quarterback in the league behind Russell Wilson, in my opinion. Uh, just exciting to watch. How can you put up so many points against? Well, against Houston, that was unbelievable. And then Tennessee, that was. They were down again at home, able to get it done. In a, I guess that was a revenge game, the, the Titans-Chiefs game, able to recoup that uh, loss at home. I've got a, an interesting stat here. Just pause for a moment as I pull this up. <clears throat> but Kansas City, first quarter, minus half a point, is plus 142. So they're expecting a slow start from the Kansas City Chiefs. Whereas San Francisco first quarter, plus half a point, minus 168. It's interesting. That That is very interesting, Big Rye. I, I don't, that doesn't make sense to me. I think that's just more recency bias. The Chiefs have had poor first quarters the entire year. What, I don't know, perhaps that's just a uh, statistical anomaly. I don't think the sample's there to prove that. Maybe, maybe they do, I haven't noticed, and they just, they run... They're a little more conservative, less gunslinging in the first first quarter. But uh, there's also uh, stats that they might defer more often. We don't have all the all the facts in front of us, guys. But that, but just that was seems just something... unreasonable. Very good point here, Big Rye. That might be a bet I will actually uh, inquire about. Well, considering the considering the money line is minus 107 for San Fran, minus 109 for Kansas City, it just doesn't add up there. Because you could take the the Chiefs. Minus half a point at plus 142. San Fran money line at minus 107 and be guaranteed money. Uh, I think I'm going to probably jump on the Chiefs in this first quarter. 
Uh, all that being said, that was a, that, that a little bit of uh, improvisation here from Big Rye to keep me on my toes. And believe me, these toes cannot hold this weight for much longer. And I will say, if that game finished as a tie the first quarter, obviously that would be a loss. So don't take that advice. That is terrible advice. Stay away from that. Bet one or the other. The Chiefs minus half a point, plus 142 at Pinnacle right now for the first quarter bet. Just an interesting little tidbit. Yeah, very interesting. So uh, the market, though, the market, Big Rye, it's favoring the San Francisco 49ers? The market plays the San Francisco 49ers. So as you see, 43% of the bets are on San Fran, 52% of the money. So early sharps are on San Francisco. There's been about 16,000 bets. I expect to see over 100,000. So we're looking at like maybe 10 Fifteen percent of the bets so far. Uh, could even go higher. It could go higher. The uh, but early play right now, San Francisco on the market. We're going to continue with videos throughout the week, uh, throughout these two weeks, previewing the Super Bowl. Hopefully, we'll be able to keep you guys posted on what's happening day to day with this Super Bowl market because Super Bowl is one of the more interesting games of the year. It, well, it's it's it, the vo from a volume perspective. I do expect this game to end with. 50% of the money and 50% of the public on one side. I really do. It, it's it's rare for there to be too big of a split in the Super Bowl. So if that's the case where it's going right now, this line might pull, pull up to Kansas City minus two. You might be able to get a little bit better odds on San Fran, depending on that. But 52% of the money is on San Francisco right now. This might just hold still. It could just be a couple early sharps or, or some early big bets on San Francisco despite the public mostly siding with Kansas City early on which is hard to it's hard to argue people like Mahomes the public is going to like you said it's going to be hard for anyone to say that Garoppolo is better than Mahomes and for a lot of people that's how they bet they bet based off quarterbacks yeah and and Kansas City has an air of excitement that San Francisco ha doesn't have I don't feel but yeah. San Francisco getting it done uh running in the run game and in defense that's that's more my style. Uh, my gut did say Kansas City, but uh, during the uh, the pre-show, we did. This is tight, man. This is tight. There's no. I don't really feel like there's a wrong or a right answer here, in regards to the game. I think the no. only an, the only question that you need to uh, you you need to pose to yourself is this the right price? Everybody's got a price, as Ted DiBiase would say. Yeah. So I, I think this is a question of whether you get a good price from Tom, Dick, or Harry. You know the best way of doing it if you're trying to solicit a bet? Not that I should be giving hustling advice on a YouTube channel, but just find out what team the other guy wants and make him pay a steep price for it. Easiest way of going, everybody, because this is the time for making those uh, Tom, Dick, and Harry bets. So vis-a-vis, -vis, just take the other side of what someone else wants and make them pay heavy juice. That's just what I would do. Do you see how big that smile was on his face? Anytime you... You talk about getting suckers to make bets. Uh, I've never seen this guy smile so big. See, but that's not. It's it's. There's placement. There's someone wants entertainment value from picking the side that they want. You don't get to pick a side, so they have to pay a premium for you to take that side. I think that's pretty. Uh, I think it's a fair trade-off. Sometimes they win. Sometimes they lose. Sometimes you end up with more money in your pocket. It's a simple formula. So, despite what the fat guy. Wanted. He wanted to flip the coin. We do have San Fran plus one and a half. Yes. At the moment, early on, sixteen thousand bets. Forty-three percent of betters are on San Fran. Fifty-two percent of the money. Uh, the line has moved though from a pick 'em to minus one. So early on, the line got pushed up for the Chiefs, uh, but we are on San Fran at the moment. Point in case we got some Bay Area hats on right now. That's true. My new favorite team, at least for the week. <laughs> uh, I shouldn't say that. I, I would much prefer Kansas City win. Uh, see Andy Reid. I do really love Kyle Shanahan as well. Uh, We've been Andy Reid fans <laughs> since uh, since our, our, our first big bet together, Big Ryan and I. Our first bet was a uh, as large a wager as we could possibly muster on Kansas City over, what was it, seven and a half? I think it was seven and a half and wins. And they won nine straight. Andy Reid's first season with Alex Smith. So It was nice. That roster was so strong. God, it they, was. So many stars. Two and 14 the year before, though. <laughs> so we have a, we do have a little nostalgia about Kansas City. And I, from a fan perspective, I think it's better for football if Kansas City wins. But uh, uh, we're going with the Niners this week by the slimmest of margins. This could be updated. It's, more could be called an early lean on San Francisco because our sentiments could change as the uh, as the two weeks roll on. 
as well. Kyle Shanahan has a soft spot in our heart because of uh, him being the offensive coordinator for the Cleveland Browns, probably the best iteration coached Browns over our uh, fandom, let's say, the last 11 years. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I've worn a lot of Browns gear this this year because, I mean, I just I couldn't stand it. I don't like a lot of skill position players. Coaching's been horrible. Ownership is just a dumpster fire. So I've been a little bit more on the Raiders these days just because I like the direction that they're headed in. All that being said, these you know, we can add a little personality closing notes. It's the last pick video of the year. Yeah, remember, like, comment, subscribe. We're going to be having a lot more content coming out for you guys with all the other sports. Our focus is largely on the NFL, but during the offseason, we're going to put in a lot of work to the other sports to hopefully be able to give you guys good advice and uh, good market advice. We're going to broaden our horizons a little bit. That's the plan here. And uh, the reason we only we don't share like over under, for instance, we don't actually have a good track record. We don't. We don't. We Any of um, uh I guess gambling advice we give you has to be in the positive expected realm or we just won't do it. So until we have a uh, concrete way, which there is no concrete way, until we have a till we have a uh, better than average way of picking and get, picking anything, we won't be sharing it just because that would be, uh, I guess, be against our fiduciary duty. Yeah, we don't want to be giving out bad advice. Nope. But on that same note, the over under 79% of people are on the over. Yes. The line is 53 and a half. Fat guy and I would jump all over the under. That has no meaning. It's like 50%. You're probably going to lose money over the long term taking that advice. So just jump on uh, the over while you can <laughs> and fade us. But other than that, like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff. Thanks. Thank you all for watching. Uh, it's been an incredible season. It's been a lot of fun. Uh, hats off to you guys. Uh, hats off to Dylan Toddfield for shaving all the stuff. We're going to see what kind of collateral he can gain over the next uh, few months so he can make bets next year. Absolutely. See what he can grow back. He can't grow the eyebrows back, though. It's not allowed. And just so you know, we just might as well. We'll put the uh, milk video again in the description. Yeah, might as well. If you stuck well. with us this long, you wouldn't mind watching it again. Neither would we. Yeah, I think it was criminally uh, underviewed. Yes. So if you're stuck around this long, watch the Dylan Toddfield milk video. It's hilarious. He's drinking his own uh, delicates, as the yes. fat guy likes to say. Uh, delicate hairs. And uh, it's quite entertaining. Five-star entertainment value by Dylan Toddfield. That's for sure. All right, guys. Thank you very much. Uh, and whatever. I don't know. I don't got anything funny to say.